So it's a really sweet delight to welcome you to this little brief update of Passion Life's recent travels in amazing places, the Amazon in Colombia and Cuba across the island. And Mark has just returned uh, with a bad cold, I should say, from Argentina. Uh, it's been a really busy couple of of weeks of travel, and we just really appreciate you taking a few minutes to get this update. Uh, we're not large in numbers, but hopefully we're mighty in prayer and dedication and resolve, and we want to make sure that all of you who are praying see what God is doing through your prayer. So I want to welcome you. Mark, it's good to see you. It sounds like you've landed in a good uh, open place. You want to tell everybody where you are and yeah. how you doing? Yeah, I, I, my wife's birthday happens to be today. May 25th is my wife's birthday. And uh, I have just returned from a couple of weeks of intensive traveling. And she had set up for us to come out into the middle of nowhere, uh -huh. into the woods, to go camping with her family for a night. Sweet. So uh, they're just up where I can just see them a few hundred yards away around a campfire, kind of talking and telling stories and laughing, and I'm over here getting this quick recording in with you. Okay, great, great. Well, I know it's been an amazing trip, uh, particularly the highlights seem to be coming out of Cuba, and yeah. uh, it's such an amazing place, Cuba. So why don't you just go ahead and, and jump in and give us a little bit of your re report from your travels there? Well, we had, a, we had an excellent trip to Cuba, a uh, team of three Passion Life staff members. So mm -hmm. Jeannie, Jeannie Pernia, for those of you who know, is, uh, is our Latin American director. She directs all of our Latin American operations. And uh, Jeannie and I have been to Cuba together with, with, other, with teams of people. This was my 20th trip. Jeannie's been there. So. Jeannie's been there even more than I have. Yeah. <clears throat> we met up with one of our team members from the country of Colombia while we were there. So it was great to travel and teach with Anderson. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about, more about Anderson as we go. And another special thing about this trip is we were able to uh, link up with a, a an emerging leader who is a Cuban national from Havana who has been traveling with us. And, and uh, yeah, it's it was really great to, to travel with this national leader. His name is Sandy get to know him better and see what kind of fit he would be for our working even more closely with him in coming months and years. Well, we've already begun to see some highlights. So uh, you have a couple of pictures to show us? Sure. Sure. I'm going to, I'm actually going to uh, defer to our media team who's kind of pulling the strings uh, okay. of the puppet show here behind the scenes. And they're going to uh, pull up some slides for us. So the first slide is, Wonderful. Tell us a little bit more about Cuba, because I, I don't think that people appreciate right now. I mean, we're all busy with our own lives. And to the degree that we tune in, we tune into kind of like American U.S. politics kind of thing. But but give us uh, uh, our, our our fellowship a little bit of an assessment of what, what is it that, that that's going on in Cuba that is uh, both heart wrenching and inspiring. It's a good reminder, John, because sometimes I, I get into talking about Cuba with people and I realize that there's there's for some people, they kind of have a pretty good idea of what's going on in Cuba and why. And some people really don't have um, much of a history of Cuba without getting into the history. Just our, our effort to keep communism out of our hemisphere <clears throat> resulted in an embargo against Cuba that started many years ago. And the, the, the result of that has been that the Cuban leaders have used the embargo as a way of making America look bad and have just let their people fall into suffering, ruin, poverty, and despair. Mm. It really is a very sad, sad thing to witness as you travel there, people lining up to be able to buy bread, people lining up to be able to buy eggs and yeah. uh they're only rationed a certain number of eggs per month you can't eat beef there it's illegal you can't buy milk or even milk powder unless you have a baby in the home and there's only a limited amount of that it's really a very desperate and destitute situation yeah 
There's something People romantic. Talk, oh. There's something romantic about those seventy-five-year-old cars up and That's down right. the street, but they only yeah. look romantic in pictures because, in the reality. They're just painful to be in and there's not enough travel and people can't move around and there's yeah. no gas. And I mean, it's just on and on and on, isn't it? If you'll, if you'll imagine, uh, because of the embargo, they really haven't been able to get cars since the flourishing days of the 30s and 40s when all those cars came in from America. And uh, those same cars that are now 60, 70, 80 years old are still lumbering up and down the roads. And it's not some romantic thing just in kind of like the touristy touristy areas of Havana. It's from, from one tip of the island to the other. That's what they have to travel in. Imagine roads in total disrepair and 80-year-old cars that are held together with Bondo. I mean, you, 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 you shut the door. You don't slam it shut behind you. You get in and you just kind of pull it until it latches so that the doors don't fall apart. It's really a very sad mm -hmm. situation. In fact, I have a picture here that I just kind of snapped of just kind of your average town uh, uh, scene that you might see on the road in any town in Cuba. It looks kind of quaint with the kind of the art deco architecture, people sitting on the sidewalks. Uh, you know, maybe it would look a lot better with a coat of paint. But the fact is, these old buildings are falling into disrepair. And instead of seeing, you know, cars whizzing up and down the sidewalks and people, you know, walking and on bikes and on skateboards, you're seeing people walk around on horse drawn carts. And, uh, it's, it's only, it's only quaint until you realize there is no alternative to the way mm. these people live. Mm. It really is kind of a sad situation. And right now seems to be a more difficult time in Cuba than any time in recent memory. Yeah. Goods scarce than ever. Uh, uh, public meetings are watched with more scrutiny than ever. It's just a very, very difficult time in Cuba and a good time for us yeah. as the church has to be praying for them. And the believers there, how are they responding? Well, as uh, can historically be traced, uh, when the church is in jeopardy, when it's being threatened and when there's uh, persecution and martyrdom, uh, the church tends to flourish with the persecution because mm. only those churches that are willing to suffer the consequences are really the ones that are are in operation. So it's 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 not like some areas where the church is not allowed any freedom. There there is a certain amount of freedom uh, of religious expression allowed in Cuba, but it's very heavily watched and very heavily guarded. Mm. We have another picture here. Um, that I'll ask our media team to put up is from the inside of a church while we were teaching there recently, just two weeks ago. It is not a wonderful picture of the, the congregation and the people. But the, the reason I chose this picture is because in the foreground of the picture, it, it, it shows Anderson Ocampo kind of from the back. He is our Passion Life uh, Colombian representative. And in the middle of the aisle behind him, wearing a dark Passion Life or Passion Vita t-shirt, is our national leader, Sandy. And I just wanted to have this picture of the two of them interacting before a group. Uh, and, and they are letting a woman off to the left side kind of bear testimony to things that she has seen in Cuba. Uh, again, it's, it's not necessarily an epic photo of us at work, but it does show Anderson and Sandy yeah. working together. And they, they're having uh, influence, the two of these guys, well beyond the borders of the nation of Cuba itself. Yeah, it seems like the essence of the gospel is to make disciples and to equip people. And this is our version of that, of, of training up another group of leaders that can actually take charge and lead. In Latin America, we operate under the name Passion Vida rather than Passion Life. And that's what I think their shirt said Passion Vida on it, right? They did. And, that's correct. Uh, and Sandy is uh, someone who's really rising as a pastor to pastors now across that island. Yeah, pa uh, Sandy really has national level leadership skills. Mm. In the next slide that we have, I actually have a, a, a graphic that Sandy designed and sent to us. It's, it's written in Spanish. Mm. But if you're looking at this graphic, the red squares represent provinces where Sandy and or uh, another Passion Life representative, Jeannie, myself, people who've been going to Cuba to represent Passion Life, have set up 
uh, re- uh, we've worked in each of these provinces enough to have a representative in that province mm. or representatives, plural, to be able to kind of take responsibility for overseeing the work of Passion Life and the training of pro-life leaders within that specific province of Cuba. I think I think that there are 17 Cuban provinces and that we have leaders established in 11 of those Cuban provinces, which means there are six left to tackle. And in this graphic, the green squares represent the two uh, uh, the two provinces that we have plans to go to next and develop leaders that we have already identified in those provinces as okay. being potential province level leadership. Okay, so between your twenty trips and and Jeannie's close to thirty trips. Uh, and the development of indigenous leadership, a, a genuine national strategic plan is, is actually unfolding there. That's exactly what it is. It's, if you will, it's a, it's a chain. It's a chain of pro-life work mm. that reaches across the island with regional representatives all along the way. And the beauty is these leaders will all be able to interact with the leaders in the provinces surrounding them and really gain some synergy and do yeah. some discipleship. One another. Let me just take a minute here to, to, to encourage anybody watching this that if you have not gone to uh, Passion Life website and signed up for our electronic updates, this is a really good inducement to go and do that. Um, if you're a Spanish uh, speaker, that's your first language. You can also go to Passion Vida and sign up there as well passionvita.org or passionlife.org and stay updated about Cuba and uh, some of the other adventures that are happening. Uh, any, any other thing you want to wrap up on Cuba? Yeah, just the last thing that I want to show you from Cuba is a picture. And this picture really just kind of represents oh what it is that we're doing. This is a picture of fruit. Wow. This is just a picture. This is a picture not of people that I have influenced or that Jeannie has influenced though she's had more influence than I have, or that Anderson has influenced. These are women and families that the local Cuban pro-life leaders that we've been discipling have been pouring into and investing. So standing in the back of this picture is a group of young mothers who came in thinking that abortion was their best option. The local Cuban leadership, the Christians talked with them, worked with them, helped them bring their fear down and their hope up. And the result is they have decided to trust God and trust these Christians. Their babies have been born. Mm. Some of them have become believers because of it. And in the front rows, sitting down in the chairs and on the couch in the front, are the girls who are, are pregnant with babies that they have decided to keep but have not yet, yet given birth. The girl right in the center is only 13 years old, but she has decided that she is going to raise this baby with her family hmm. uh, instead of, instead of uh, making the penalty of, uh, of her choices go to the baby itself in, in, in the idea yeah. of aborting the baby. Yeah. You know, the, the other thing that I would just add to this, if we could put a frame around this picture that would be gold, it would be the fact that this beautiful picture of fruit is occurring by people who are hard pressed and who make less than $20 a month. And yet they're finding ways to give of themselves and to help these mothers. It's, it's, it's the oppression and the long suffering believers in Cuba that are producing this fruit. And, and, uh, I don't know, it just to me that makes it all the more glorious is that these people are serving and doing this out of their poverty, but out of their, the great riches of their faith. So that, that's a beautiful thing to see happening in Cuba. <clears throat> John, you are so right. I mean, this, uh, this represents sacrifice on the part of Christians who believe what the Bible says and trust in God with the kind of faith that says, even though I am hard pressed, us. I am going to sacrifice for you. Right. And that's why many of these people are, are finding not only uh, 
uh, salvation for their babies, but salvation for their very souls as they trust these Christians. Yeah. In Cuba, needs to know this incredible joy that they are the ones who are being able to do this. It's their resources that are doing this. And that's why it can spread across the island because we're very, very careful not to rob them of the dignity and the joy of, of God using them uh, to sell, to save their neighbors. Uh, yeah, that, even uh, I've heard John say so many times, John, I've heard you say so many times, even poor people like to give. That's I right. Mean, and they, they need just to know the joy. Them. Exactly, exactly. And it's why our people give. It's why you give. It's why our supporters give, because there's joy in giving. But that's true for everybody, even that's among correct. the poor. So um, yeah. while you were there, I was off in uh, Colombia and uh, teaching uh, about 1,200 pastors and leaders from all over Latin America in a big old church. Um there were not a lot of uh, fancy, exciting pictures out of that. It's just a big group of people in a stadium. Um, yeah. And I did get a chance to address all of them on one occasion, though most of the time I was teaching more of a group of 150 to 250 people going through the four questions. But what's going to emerge out of that is contacts in Mexico, contacts in Honduras, contacts in Ecuador, contacts in Nicaragua. And we're going to be able to continue to, to send Anderson and even Sandy now to some of these other countries throughout Latin America and continue to, re, to multiply uh, our leadership in all these different places. Yeah, yeah that's the key word for, for, uh, for Passion Life is multiplication. John and I can only do so much. Jeannie can only do so much. But if we can replicate ourselves and other, others, you get the kind of pictures like we just showed you, you know, Cuban people that John and Jeannie and I have never met yeah. who have saved their babies because a Christian who did hear our message or heard our message from another Cuban Christian decided to keep their baby. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the picture of Cuba with the different zones and provinces shows a real national strategic plan and a multi-year initiative effort on our part. But yeah. you also went on what we call an explore trip to Argentina last week. You want to just tell everybody what an explore trip is and what you did? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, again, Jeannie and Anderson and I went to Argentina. We had been home from Cuba for two or three days. Uh, we also met up with another Passion Life kind of uh, official representative. Her name is Nadu, and she's also uh, of Colombian nationality. So the four of us went to Argentina on what we as Passion Life call an explore trip. What that means is it's a country that we really have not established any beachhead of work in, but we're going there to demonstrate what we do and to find out more about the status of the church, to find out more about the maturity of the pro-life leadership that may or may not exist in that area of the world, and what kind of opportunities we see God opening before us in that in that country, if that's a country that we want to go back and, and invest more resources in. That's what an explorer trip is. So if for there's passion. a kind of a, a response, kind of a spirit anointed response among some of the people there, then it may transition into more of a three or four year initiative that we Correct. would take repeated trips to and really pour in time and resources and effort. But not everywhere you go to explore uh, becomes an initiative either. That's correct. Yeah, so we took an explore trip to Cuba in 2016, and this was my 20th trip there since then. Yeah. And every, every country in which we have an initiative, it really starts as an exploratory trip to find out whether or not God wants us to invest in the leaders that we meet there. And we've been to several countries that we have been to once or twice or three times and, and never gone back. But we're really looking for where uh, God is opening long-term initiative opportunities for us. And did you see a good response or is it in, in Argentina or is it a little too early to say yet? Well, I would say that it's early to say other than uh, we met incredible leaders who are exceptionally passionate and exceptionally well positioned to have a voice of influence within the culture, within mm. the Christian culture. And we also made strategic inroads with several churches that have a lot of influence 
within Argentina. Okay. We, we find there a strong church, a, a, a mature leadership base, and a desire to grow in a pro-life ethic. And so I would, what I would say is on first glance, it looks like this Explore trip produced an opportunity in Argentina that we will be building on. That's, that is my guess at this point. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you for that update and we'll see where it all leads. Uh, again, for our listeners, we started in China and we're in now 27 countries. Maybe now we have to pump it up to 28 now that we've gone to Argentina uh, yep. We're working in 21 different languages, uh, the last I looked. And we're about to, if you're in the Atlanta area, we're about to celebrate uh, our 10th anniversary of mission work uh, around the world. I think we have a slide about our upcoming dinner. So if you're in the, in the greater Atlanta, Georgia area, <coughs> I'd like to invite you to this 10th anniversary celebration and fundraising dinner. Uh, it's at Johnson Ferry Baptist Church in Marietta. And we're looking forward to really celebrating before the Lord and with each other the progress that has been made in these different countries and to point toward what we're going to do over the next 10 years. So uh, I want to thank all of you who have prayed and invested in this work and followed us on this recent trip to Colombia and to uh, Cuba. And I just want to close up our time with uh, a reminder that we like to encourage our team and all of our Passion Life community fellowship of, of, of prayer warriors and partners and assistants to remember every day at 3.20 in the afternoon, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's what we want to labor towards, glory in the church and in Jesus Christ, in the saving and the transformation of many lives. And we just want to thank you for joining us in that mission. Uh, set your alarm on your on your cell phone to 3.20 in the afternoon if you want to, to, to kind of get this little reminder to pray us forward. And I just want to thank you, Mark, for taking time on your wife's birthday. Give her a big hug for all of us. And sure uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, a thousand thanks for all of you who are by our side in this work. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.